Hi, welcome back to the YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to look at some elements of integration. Okay. Now, if you're new to integration, um, the next couple of videos, including this one, would help you um, to get started on understanding all the various types of functions that you can integrate and uh, the ideas behind integrating those functions. Now, let's just break down what integration really means and in the context in the context of that, we try to solve these two problems. All right, so um, how um, do we come about integration and when do we use this? Okay. So, so far so good in this particular um, problem series, we understand what derivative means. So we start with the function y, which is a function of x, and then the derivative of this function with respect to x would give us a new function, let's call it g of x. So this is called the derivative of a function, right? So this is basically f prime of x, right? This is how we define derivative. Now, the question is this. Let's say, um, um, so the concept of integration is going backwards, right? It's when I give you dy dx and I ask you to find y. So basically I'm telling you that, okay, I know g of x, but then can you find, can you tell me which function, in which when I differentiate such function, I'll get g of x. Right, so it's really like you're trying to solve an inverse problem or kind of reverse engineer the problem. Okay, so now how do we how do we operate this? So think about dy dx equal to g of x, which is the derivative, and then we when we cross multiply, of course we can have g of x multiplied by dx. Right, so when we take dx to the other side, now in order to get y. This is where the concept of integration comes in. We integrate both sides. So when we integrate both sides of this function, okay? Now, integrating both sides, now we understand that what d, which is derivative of y, would, um, would um, the opposite of that, of that d, which is this derivative, would be integral, right? So they work in opposite fashion in such a way that what integral of dy would give us y. Okay, and therefore that basically means in order to get y, we just have to integrate this g of x with respect to x, and that is it. So this is the concept of what integration. So now let's apply this concept to this particular problem. Okay, so the first problem basically states that what I have a function, I have the y dx is given. So I know the derivative of a particular function that will give me um, 3x squared minus 6x plus 2. So in the context of what I just explained, this would be my g of x, right? I think that makes perfect sense. Now, all we need to, uh, all the, what this question is asking us to do now is to find y. So we need to find y. And as you already understood from here, all we need to do to get y is to integrate this function, right? So the first thing is we cross multiply, right? Like I did earlier on. So we cross multiply um, the, and bring the x to this side, and then we integrate both sides. So you, we now integrate both sides, right? So it turns out that what the left hand side becomes y, then the right hand side is just the integral of this, the x. Now, you need to understand how we integrate um, various functions. And I think I would, um, in the next video, that will become very clear. But just for the purpose of this video, anytime I have um, a polynomial, so say I have um, a polynomial y, um, y equal to x raised to power n, right? If I want to integrate this function, anytime I want to integrate a polynomial in this way, of course, n must not be equal to minus one, okay? So anytime I want to integrate such polynomial function or just a function of x to a power of n where n could be any number um, except minus one. So it could be a fraction, it could be um, positive number, it should be a negative number, right? Now, what I get is this would give us, we increase the power of, um, x by one divided by that power, the new power n plus one, then plus a constant, okay? So this is how we integrate polynomial function. Now, when we apply this, 
And of course, there's another rule um, that we'll use here is when I have sums or subtraction of functions, integral of the addition or subtraction of function would be addition or subtraction of individual integration of those functions. So, so for example, this can be written as 3x squared times dx minus 6x times the x plus integral of 2 dx. This is what I mean. So we can separate them in by the signs between those functions and then we integrate each one, then add or subtract them together to get the final answer, right? Much more like how differentiation works. Now let's integrate this. Now, another rule um, that you would come about is anytime you're having a constant multiplying a particular derivative, so we have a particular function here, dx. We can take the constant out, multiplying that with um, the, the integral of this particular function, right? So in this case, we can take the three out. So I'm just breaking it down to the simplest form before we finally integrate, okay? Okay. Now, what this is, is what? Um, now integrate x squared, that would give us x raised to power n plus one over n plus one, right? So n is actually two, so that means two plus one over two plus one. So this is derivative of an um, integral of x squared dx. What about the next one? Integral of x is just x squared over two, right? The power of x here is one, so we increase it by one, which is one plus one, which, which is how I got two, then divide by that same power. Then finally, this is just x raised to power zero is in here, Remember, x raised to power zero is one. So when we increase the power, we are going to get x raised to power zero plus one all over one, right? Then we have a constant here. So basically this would give us three x raised to power three over three minus six um, x squared over two plus two x plus c, which can be simplified as three x raised to power cubed, um, x raised to power three, then minus three x squared, plus two x plus c. Now this is our y, okay? Now we need to add this constant at the end of every integration because there could be several functions in which, um, so if I do differentiate this function, now you'll see that I'll have three x. So if I find the y dx from here, notice that I'll have three x squared minus six x plus two, right? Now this c, because c is a constant, the derivative of this will be zero, right? So it means there are so many, different functions where we have um, this constant to be any um, real number where the derivative of such function will give us, all of them will give us the same thing. So we need to know, um, so depending on the initial conditions that you have, you can determine what C could be. Or if it is not given to you, you could just say this is the class of solution to the problem, like because there could be many functions that would give us um, in which its derivative would give us the function that we have here, okay? So what we need to do now is um, we are given, we are given initial conditions, which is when y is seven, x is zero. So we now say, okay, when y is seven, x is zero. Can we use this to determine what this constant C is? Because now that we know this initial condition, this will now make this function to be unique, right? This is the unique function that we'll be looking at that will satisfy all these conditions. It will satisfy this one, and then it will also satisfy this one. So let's do that. So when y equal to seven, so y equal to seven, x is zero, so that means zero cubed minus three times zero square plus two times zero plus c. So it just tells us that what? c is equal to seven. So that means the main function that we are looking for y should be this, three x cubed plus two x, plus seven. So this is the answer to the problem. Okay. I hope you understand, you follow the solution to this particular problem. In the next one, we're gonna move a little bit faster because you understand the principles now. Now, um, so what do we have next? The second problem. We basically have to, uh, we, the question actually asks us to find V in terms of T. Now, DV dt is giving us five minus two KT. Right, and we are given some initial conditions. So when v is zero, um, t is zero, and then when v is one, t is equal to one. So, um, so with this, we need to find 
um, K. Okay, so first of all, we need to find T, the class of solutions or the class of functions that when we take the derivative, it will give us five minus KT. So again, you do understand that what we need to take the integral of both sides. Of course, after multiplying dt, taking dt to the other side, and this will give us v, and which will now become integral of five minus two kt dt. Okay. So now you can actually integrate this um, at once, knowing that what integral of five will just be five times because the power of t here is just zero, so it will be five t. The power of t will increase to one divided by one, like we did in the previous. Um, problem. And then what about the second term? We have 2k. These are constants. So 2 is a constant and k is constant. So 2k, we can take it out. Then integral of t will just give us t squared over 2 because the power on t is 1. So we increase the power by 1, which is 1 plus 1, which, is, which gives us 2. Then we divide by that power. So this is what we have. Okay. Integral of this is 5t minus 2k t squared over 2 plus c. Right? Don't forget your C. C is the additional constant that you have to um, have to give us classes of solutions to this problem. Now, let's use the initial conditions. When V is zero, T is zero. So this means zero equal to five times zero minus two K zero square over two plus C. So this gives us zero equal to, this is zero, minus, so zero minus zero plus C, which means C is zero. So we got C as zero. So now, for now, what we have is what? B must be equal to 5T minus 2K T squared over two, right? Now, what was the second, um, second condition? Let's use the second condition now. It says when V is one, T is one. So that is five times one minus two times K, one square over two. And what does that give us? One equal to five minus two we'll cancel this. So I'll have K times one square, which is K. So therefore it means that what? K must be equal to five minus one, which means K is equal to four. So we now have that what? Um, so K is equal to four, which means our V is actually 5T minus two times four over two T squared. So this is 5T to cancel two minus four t squared. So this is the function v, right? And of course we got k as what four. Okay. So this brings us to the end of this particular video. I hope you like this. Uh, you find this um, video valuable. If you do, make sure you subscribe to the channel um, to support its growth. And then like and comment below if there's any particular question you, will, you want me to look at for you and for us to also, uh, for me to have on this particular channel. And of course, share with your friends, share on the social media so that other students like you can benefit from such knowledge. So I'll, um, I'll be making more videos on integration. So stay tuned and make sure you click the, um, the bell button so that you can get notification anytime I upload a new video. And I will see you guys in the next one.